Stay up to date with what's happening in North Central Washington. Go to the NCW Life Community Calendar at ncwlife.com. Welcome to Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees with Bonnie Orr. Each week, Bonnie and her co-host Dan Kuntz walk you through the do's and don'ts, the challenges, and the rewards of gardening in North Central Washington. So, let's garden. And welcome to today's edition of Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees. I am Dan Kuntz. She is Bonnie Orr. Thank you, fans, for your patience in this spring of 2017. Mother Nature keeps throwing us a curveball, Bonnie. We set a time to get together and film a new episode, and Mother Nature says, nah, I'm going to rain on you today. Or I'm going to blow on you. Or I'm going to blow on you today. <laughs> so we're, we're in all, full disclosure, we're behind schedule and, this year. And we're inside for the first time. We're inside on, a, on, it's the middle of June, and we have to shoot inside because the weather is not cooperating. But that's okay, because today's topic, we don't need to be outside, do we? No. We don't. Do the honors, please, of introducing our special okay, guest. Okay, our special guest is um, Julie Sanderson, and Julie is the expert on weeds. So when people say, oh, my yard is just full of weeds, or, you know, there's these noxious weeds just growing along the road, but you know what? People many times don't really know what a noxious weed is. And I'm one of them. I'm here to learn. Okay. So <laughs> we're, we're going to find out. I mean, there's a little book called Noxious Weeds. This is called Noxious Weeds That Harm Washington State. Noxious Weeds That Are Good for Washington State is a pamphlet that does not exist. <laughs> Before we go anywhere, Julie, we've talked about this off camera. We have a Noxious Weed Control Board. The counties do. There's a reason for that. And this is the lady who's in charge of that. Right. Why do we have a noxious weed control board? Well, um, all of the counties in the state except Douglas County have a noxious weed control board. And we have to kind of go back to what a noxious weed is because by definition a noxious weed are those weeds that are uh, damaging to either agriculture or natural resources. And the state noxious weed board maintains a list which is updated every year of the noxious weeds for the state. That list resides in our RCW and, and wax for the state. There's about 142 species on the list. I might be wrong, might be 43, 143. Um, but it does change a little bit year by year depending on if some things are taken off or some things are added on. So these weeds, by law, are the weeds that homeowners, landowners have to control on their properties. So the difference between a noxious weed and, and a nuisance weed, the, the noxious weeds are on a list it's, um, they will harm the is, commercial it crops. Is, yeah, it is a law that you have to control them. Because if you don't, they're going to get into pear orchards and apple orchards or wheat fields or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and, and it and depends. You know, some weeds are more more um, damaging to natural resources, say uh, the stream side ecology, or in agriculture, depending on where you are, which county they they focus on certain weeds more than others, depending on which crops they're trying to protect. So yeah, they are weeds that have been chosen for this list because of the fact that they're difficult to control for one thing they're damaging when they get out of control and so they've been put on the list so that um, we can put an emphasis on controlling those weeds what are we to learn today bonnie what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of them some of the weeds in when they first are immature because most of the time people don't even notice the weeds until they are gigantic and they right. are and which they are flowering and putting out seeds well right. now we are way way behind the eight ball at that point so what we have to do is if we can learn to identify the the weed when it's young then it's easier to a pull out or eradicate and we're also going to look at some a, some nuisance weeds because many people can't identify a nuisance weed either and those are things which destroy the beauty of their garden and and also there's places like near um, near um, post boxes you know or near the stop signs which nobody seems to take care of and which look just awful and many of them have these nuisance weeds and again if you can identify them young you know get them young and get rid of them <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's all about weeds today but not just any weeds noxious weeds and how they don't tell the difference between a noxious weed and a nuisance weed it's a huge thing. We're going to talk about that and a whole bunch more. This is a two-part episode of Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees because, again, we're a little behind schedule in 2017. <laughs> but then again, everything is, right? That's right. All, all the gardens are, too. So yeah. it's all about weeds when we come back. Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees on the NCW Live channel. Don't go anywhere. Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees will be right back after this. 
Is your vehicle in need of a quick oil change or tune-up before hitting the road this summer? Stop by Quick Lube and Tune, the home of the good guys at 610 South Wenatchee Avenue. Welcome back to Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees on the NCW Life Channel. And we are back. Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees, a special edition. We're talking about weeds, noxious weeds, and nuisance weeds, but mostly noxious weeds. Before agriculture came to North Central Washington, did people even care about these things, Julie? I think that's how they came. Well, I think that's all, yeah, that's okay. probably how some of the weeds got here. Um, by definition, the noxious weeds are non-native plants. We don't have plants that are native to this area on the noxious weed list. No matter how much you dislike poison ivy, it's not going to get on the noxious weed list because it's a native plant. And the noxious weed list only contains those plants that have come here from someplace else. They come in straw, they come in seed, they come in horse poop. There's a lot of different ways to, to transport seeds. Um, they can be in the mud on someone's boot. Um, we have some, some that come from uh, shipping um, in the ballast of boats back sure. in the day when there was a lot of shipping done by boats. And trains moved. And trains moved weeds as well. Yeah, so it, over the course of history, you know, the weeds have arrived here in lots of different ways. And in, in the current times, often a question that I get is somebody finds a noxious weed on their property, or I find it on their property and tell them they have to control it. And they would say, well, I think this came from my neighbor's house. <laughs> well, you know, it may have or it may not have. But, but it's the, on your the property The bottom line now. is, if the weed is on your property, you're responsible for controlling. And that's really one of the first questions people ask me is, how did this get here? Well, I don't know and I can't figure it out. There's, there's no forensic method of telling where the weeds actually came from. And the weeds will go wherever they could possibly can. That's right. And that's another thing we hear often when I do find something on somebody's property. They'll say, well... Why are you so concerned about this? It's not going anywhere. And then I say, well, did you plant it here? Well, no, I didn't plant it. It just showed up. <laughs> well, I, well, and it's windy. Have you, have you noticed that it's windy here? It is windy. So the, the <laughs> seeds in, in our local neighborhoods, um, we're not talking about transporting maybe by boat or by train anymore, but if we're looking at a local neighborhood, some of the ways that seeds move, all these things happen here. Wind. Um, when we get gully washers in the spring, um, things move down drainages, um, animals move things, pets, birds, 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 wild yeah. animals. And so there are a lot of different ways very locally that seeds move as well. And, and also one thing that we do see is that it, uh, seeds move on machinery. So you might have no weeds in an area and all of a sudden it's divided and people are punching in driveways up these drainages. and scraping for houses here and there and all of a sudden white top is everywhere and it probably came off of, of the machinery so that's a really important thing to remember is that um, if you especially if you rent machinery you bring in a auger to dig holes in your property make sure it's cleaned in an area that you can control weeds on a driveway or something like that and then if you move it off of your property you know have have it clean before you go if you rent anything, you know, lawnmowers, rototillers, anything like that, it's very important to clean the equipment before you bring it into your property. One of the things that I noticed for prime sites for, for weeds is um, alleys where, uh, and also uh, along where the postal routes are, mm -hmm. you know, where the, where the... Very good point. You know, right. and the alleys where the garbage trucks go from place to place, and they, you know, they go clear out to the landfill, and then they come back in again. And right. the postal service has those wonderful little, wonderful little white and blue and <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, little co um, machines, and it moves again and mm -hmm. it moves into areas where nobody's taking care of it. Right. And the alleys are a special problem because um, it's, when we look at weeds like puncture vine, where the weed is really designed to stick into a tire. You grab onto something <laughs> yeah, and go for a ride. Yeah, it sticks into a tire. Yep. And you do <clears throat> see puncture vine every place the garbage trucks go. And, and it isn't just to blame the garbage trucks. I mean, they're, they're picking them up somewhere and bringing them somewhere else. And if the fact is, if somebody was cleaning them up somewhere they wouldn't get elsewhere so um, it, it is a, a real a real avenue for moving weeds around is the trucks and and the other thing about alleys that makes them especially good for transporting is they're gravel or they're mud and, and uh, you're more likely to move plants over muddy surfaces because that gives you a substrate for it to stick into the wheels into the tires so if you're traveling in a muddy area you're picking up mud which may be already infested with 
with seeds and then you drop it off somewhere else where it has time to dry and fall out of the tires. I mean, some people ask me that, well, how can a tire move a seed? Well, it's really more of the, the soil that's moving the And also seeds. the fen under, underneath the fenders, right. it gets thrown up. It gets up thrown up and eventually dries and then it falls off. So, and, and with your dogs and pets, they can move seeds very easily. You see that they get seeds in their fur, then they get annoyed, they plop themselves down someplace and work at those seeds for half an hour and where did the seeds go? Well, they're probably falling right there where the dog is laying down. We Carol, talked about this. This is the Eastern Washington Field Guide. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, noxious weeds. If you say spend four days in Nia Bay, mm -hmm. can you bring a, a, a weed seed back to Wenatchee or East Wenatchee and it'll find a place to grow and grow? Oh, definitely. It'll try. I mean, that's one thing about weeds is they can grow just about anywhere where we might struggle to grow a tomato. You know, you can grow half a dozen different weeds without even trying. Um, and one of the reasons we have a booklet for Eastern Washington and Western Washington is there are, like any other plant, you know, preferences or not preferences, but um, plants are adapted for different kinds of areas. So obviously the west side is wetter and milder than the east side. And so there are some weeds that probably wouldn't do that well over here, and some of our weeds on the east side wouldn't do as well on the west side. But um, they definitely could be transported, and they would definitely give it a go if they landed here. <laughs> See, is Budley Eye listed yet? Or um, um, yeah, actually, it is on the noxious weed list on the other side, and it's it's usually of concern on the other side because it seeds easily. Right. Whereas here, we do not see we don't see it spreading. We, we right. don't see it spreading right. because the seeds cannot persist during the yeah. cold. Yeah. The other thing we have that's like that is the tamarisk. Um, yes. And in the southwest, the salt it, cedar. Yeah, mm -hmm. the salt cedar grows along streams and causes a real nuisance. We have a couple places in Chelan County where we've seen it. It's it's not actually the same species that's listed. Uh, we have Parviflora, I think, and it's um, Tamarisk uh, ramosissima that's on the list. And so the one that we have here is not an aggressive cedar, and um, it's not a problem. You go down to the southwest, and, and it is a big problem. So, yeah, it depends. I mean, e even though weeds are pretty well adapted to grow in a lot of places, they do have their their um, preferences for where they do better just like any other plant. And I hate to bring this up but it's absolutely true there are very harmful noxious weeds in Chelan and Douglas County that look so pretty. Oh they, they do. They oh, look okay, flower-like you know, and it's and like I don't want to you know. Okay here's, so here's this one. is for example. Okay, and you know I know people who've actually it looks like a snapdragon. Sure it, it does. It's, yeah. it's related. It's in the snapdragon they're, family. They're, yes. you know, cousins twice removed or 14 times removed and um, this people dig this up and plant it in their gardens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do they and know it, that they're planting weeds? Sweet. No, probably not. not which yeah. is why they did it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And this is really interesting because this is called Dalmatian toad flax and it actually came from the Croatian area mm -hmm. from Dalmatia originally. Right. Wow, it is now it's all the way here. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. And a lot and of I, our and I've seen it, I've seen it grow in in um in Croatia. Oh really? Where it is just sort of in little spots. I mean mm -hmm. it is not the thick um uh, pastures that are covered with it like we have right. here in right. terrible things. But if there's natural enemies mm -hmm. and also the temperatures and everything or the precipitation are just right to control it. Right. And we have it, it you know, we have some biocontrols for this plant and so in its natural habitat you would go back to where this weed came from and look for insects that can attack it and then those are used to develop um, into a biocontrol and with the toad flax this is one of our more successful biocontrol um, cases where we've released bugs all over the county and they spread around and they do a good job. Um, so so tell us tell areas. us what the biocontrol is. What what mechanism is it? It's a it's a I don't know if it's a weevil or a beetle, I can't remember. Okay. I think it's a beetle. Um, and it gets onto the plant and it'll, uh, the adults will actually eat some of the plant, they'll bore into the stems and lay their eggs inside of the stem. And some of the, uh, um, the larvae, I think, get into the, the seed pods also and eat the seeds. And so it's kind of a two-way um, attack. It's, it, it won't produce mature seed when it's infested with a lot of bugs. And also the boring into the stem weakens the plant to the point where the vascular system is disrupted and the plant will just die. So the, the beetles work really well on the um, um, 
Dalmatian toe flex. It looks very much like a snapdragon. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, friendly little, it's a yes. friendly, it's a really a lovely and great yellow color. Right, it is a know? beautiful plant, yeah. really. And but actually, it's a, but it's a noxious. It's a noxious weed. And it must be controlled. And it right. must be controlled. But if you look at um, at the state weed board, they went through the noxious weed list that we currently have, and they estimated that from the history that they could find, almost half of the weeds that are currently on our list were at one time intentionally planted as ornamentals. Mm -hmm. And you know you can tell which ones, because some of them are beautiful. You look at purple loosestrife, which grows along the river and along ponds and streams, and it's a beautiful plant. But it's a noxious weed because it can displace uh, what would normally be growing you know, in those areas. Uh, once the purple loosestrife gets in there, it kind of outcompetes everything else. And so for that reason, that one's on the noxious weed list, but it's still a very attractive plant. So. And what we're going to do is we're filming this episode uh, indoors, and then next week we're going to be outdoors so you can see some of these noxious weeds and some of the nuisance weeds in their natural environment. This is a good example for you at home if you're looking at your backyard or your alleyway or your lot, if you have a lot, just think, okay, maybe this is a problem after all. Green thumbs and dirty knees will be right back after this. Get the fastest internet available in North Central Washington by switching to Localtel and get speeds up to 1,000 meg. Call 888-8888 today or go online to localtel.net. Welcome back to Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees on the NCW Life Channel. Okay, so this is growing on, on, my, on my property, okay? Mm -hmm. What are my responsibilities? And, and well, what, good question. What, ha what happens? Tell, tell us okay. about this. Okay, well, I might come by one day in my car and see that you have a noxious weed on your property. So what we begin with is a letter, which is a request to control noxious weeds. We like to be friendly at first and request that you control your noxious weeds. Um, the, the RCW is written so that we actually have enforcement um, jurisdiction. We can enforce on properties where they don't control their weeds. And what that means is we could cause the weeds to be controlled, which would probably mean hiring a contractor who comes in and controls the weeds. And then, and then the we bill. sent the bill to right. the landowner. That's kind of the extreme um, situation. Yeah, we like to avoid gets that. To that yeah, we it? like yeah. to avoid that. And many times people don't really even realize they have a noxious weed. So they get the letter and they call us and they say, what's this all about? And that gives us a chance to educate them, and that's really what our, our goal is. We want as many people in the county as possible to understand what noxious weeds are, which plants are noxious weeds, and what they're supposed to do about them. So you would get this letter about this weed, Bonnie. We would give you a brochure that would explain how the weed grows, a little bit about the biology so you can understand the plant. And then you have options. You can control it by simply hand pulling if you want to pull and pull and pull because this happens to be a perennial and it will come up from persistent roots and rhizomes oh. if you um, don't do something a little more serious than pulling. Some people have told me though with persistence they've actually hand pulled and eliminated this plant on their property. Because the roots it's possible. Are, are, the roots are really um, very, very uh, vigorous. Yes, vigorous and extensive. So if you think you can dig them all out, um, sometimes at the very beginning of a small patch you actually can be successful doing that. So to eliminate the plant entirely you'd have to get rid of the roots as well. Um, so mowing it often doesn't work because many plants when you cut them down they just send up new sprouts. Sure. And, um, yeah, they just, and, and only that, but you're spreading the leaves around with yeah. the mower blades, yeah. you're going to another section of your yard, and instead right. of, instead of right. eradicating the weed, you're actually spreading the seed. Yeah, if it's already gone to seed and you uh -huh. mow it, you're definitely spreading the seed. And so, you know, there are options, chemical, mechanical. Um, there are cultural methods you can use. For example, a cultural method would be anything that encourages the plants that you want to grow in your yard. So, for example, if this is coming up in your grass, it must mean that you have some pretty bare, nasty patches in your grass if, if weeds are growing there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. cultural methods would be, okay, I'm going to pull this whenever I see it, but I'm also going to fertilize my grass, give it some more water. Choke it off, essentially. And maybe mow it at a different height so that I can get a better lawn and eliminate bare spots. So in many cases with our perennial noxious weeds, cultural is a, is a, is a tough road to hoe because you... Um, have a lot of energy stored up in these perennial underground roots and rhizomes and so the weed will keep coming up. Um, herbicide for some people is the last resort. They just don't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole but 
you know, sometimes it's the best tool for the job because it gets rid of the weeds at the root if you're using the right chemical. And, um, and, and you is, make recommendations for and the We records. do. We, we would make recommendations. And um, sometimes people get frustrated because they ask me, just tell me, just what do I have to do? And I always say, well, it depends. And it really does because it depends on what kind of property you have. Or is it a residential property? Do you have a sandbox in the backyard and a swing set? Is it a, is it a rental property where you have people who don't really maintain the lawn, but you know you, you don't want to have to do a lot of work there? You know, is it an empty lot? Is it a vacant lot? Is it a pasture? There's so many different kinds of land, and the reason that matters is the herbicides are labeled for specific sites. So something that I could use, say, on a vacant lot, I could not use in my backyard. Even though I have a pesticide license, I can't just use any herbicide anywhere I want. I have to follow the label. And if it's not labeled for residential use, then it is illegal for you to use it that way. And so you have to read the label and you have to understand what kind of property you're going to be using it on and also the goals for that property. I can't just recommend a blanket, just use Roundup. Um, if you're trying to clear an area because you're going to plant roses there, I don't want to recommend anything that has a residual that might stay in the ground more than one year, and some herbicides do. Like um, mm-hmm. And there are herbicides that you buy in the hardware store. They're registered for home use but they have some soil persistence. But if you read the label, they're not telling you to put it in your vegetable garden or your rose garden. They're telling you to put it on your driveways, walkways, mm -hmm. gravel, places where you're not gonna plant something within the next 18 months. And so all of those things are you have to take into consideration when you decide you're gonna use an herbicide. You have to absolutely read the label. And that's not just me saying that, that's actually the law. You have to read the label and follow the label. Because so, you can do more harm than good. Yes, you can. And especially, you know, you can do harm on your neighbor's property. Um, you can do harm to your future landscaping. Um, and especially when you consider your neighbor's property. I mean, hand pulling is pretty harmless. Not many people ever harm their neighbor's property by hand pulling weeds. <laughs> but if you use a chemical wrong, then you, you could have some some runoff that drifts into your neighbors and uh, you could kill some of their plants as well. So you have to follow the label and um, it's it can be a little tricky where to use which herbicide when. And timing is also important I remember too. Um, we had, there was a decision when the Loop Trail was first being established in the early 90s that there was a big section of knapweed and the decision was made instead of spraying to hand pull. And everybody goes, oh my God. Well, you know, about 30 people showed up one day with Joni Vandervoort, and we pulled this section. And I ride the loop on a regular basis, and I hardly ever see um, the napweed there in that section. I mean, right. occasionally there will be one or two little plants, which I will pull up. But I'm just amazed at how effective hand pulling yeah. was. Well, and if hand pulling can be very effective because the main thing you need to do especially with a plant like diffuse sapweed, which is a biennial. It's not a perennial. It's not going to be living there with the, you know, these powerful roots and rhizomes sending up new plants every year. Biennials will only survive if they can, can continue to complete their life cycle and drop mm -hmm. new seeds in the ground every year. So if you hand pull and the site doesn't get disturbed and it doesn't have a long history of a seed bank in the soil, you can be very effective with hand pulling just because you continually remove the seed source. No new seeds, no new plants. And, and so. what I want to do is I, I'm, I'm looking in well, Bonnie, my let's pile do this. here. Let's take a quick commercial okay. break. And okay. when we come back, Bonnie, what are we going to touch on? Well, we're going to show the where hand pulling is most effective. That's good enough for me. <laughs> Green thumbs and dirty knees. We'll be right back right after this. Yeah. Green thumbs and dirty knees. We'll be right back after this. For all the latest news in North Central Washington, go to ncwlife.com or find us on Facebook. Got a news tip? Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-2020. Welcome back to Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees on the NCW Life channel. And welcome back to Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees. The topic today is weeds. Blech. Weeds. Nobody likes weeds. Uh, before we go... <laughs> Before we go any further, Bonnie, 
Please reintroduce our special guest, <laughs> if you don't mind. This is Julie Sanderson, and she's the head of the Noxious Weed Board for Chelan I'm actually the field supervisor. You're the field, field exactly. Yes. The Mike field Mackey is our coordinator. Oh, okay. And okay. I'm the field supervisor. You're the field yes. supervisor, okay. But you, you spend, do all the work. You spend a great deal of your working day in your in your car driving around? I do, yes. When yeah. it's field season, I, I spend time looking for weeds. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. When we uh, uh, left you off, we were talking about the, the property owner's personal responsibility to take care of noxious weeds. We'll talk about some other things as well. Uh, before we go any further, before we go any further, it's been a cool wet spring. Has this been a, a bumper year for weeds or is every year a bumper year for weeds? I think every year is a bumper year for okay. weeds. Um, the thing that makes a difference is how long we have good soil moisture and this year we have had a cool spring but we've also had a wet spring and a wet fall and a wet winter. So there's a lot of moisture in the soil. Weeds are doing very well um, and what happens in, in a cooler year is not that the weeds don't come up, but it, they might just come up a little bit later. And last longer. So And, and last longer into the summer, right? Mm -hmm. Because you do have a good um, good soil moisture layer. So. But, but see, we can also have a, a new set of germination take place also. Right, exactly. Because the moisture maintains. Right. You know. some, some of the plants, like puncture vine, um, every time we get a little bit of rain, a little more moisture, they can have a new flush of growth not just from the existing plants, but actually new seedlings coming up from seed every time we get a little bit of rain. And if you have puncture vine problems, say on your driveway or near your sidewalk, every time you water, you're encouraging new seeds to germinate out of the seed bank. So um, in, the, in our normal climate, we don't have a lot of rain as we get into the summer, but any time we do, or if you have you know irrigation running off in an area, you could encourage a new flush of growth from any of the weeds that are already in the seed bank. So this, this is where uh, most people um, go, oh my gosh, what's this? This is knapweed, okay? And this is not the time to, to uh, say, oh my gosh, this is knapweed, is Right, it? Yeah. right. In fact, this is a very dangerous time in many ways because this thing is very close to blooming. Yes, it is. You can see the buds on the tips and of I'm, every And I'm branch. wondering if I pull this up, and it, and it has kind of a, it has a, a, a it has a tap root, right. and it also has diff, diff, diffuse roots. Right. But if I pull this up at this stage, will it be like a dandelion where it can just put all of its energy into a couple of the flower heads and then create seeds? That's a really good question, Bonnie, and I usually tell people if the buds are very small and tight like this and there's no sign of blooming yet, it's unlikely that knapweed will go ahead and flower. Now, if we were talking about salsify or some of the other um, plants in this family, a lot of them can do that. You pull this thing up, this is, this is salsify. And you see these everywhere. Yeah, with a little everywhere. puff on right. them. It gets a great big kind of a dandelion-like puff. Not there you yet. You can the pull lizard. this yeah. out and lay a pile of them on your property because you've worked all day pulling them. And then the next day or the day after, you'll look at that pile and it's just puffing out seed in the breeze. Because even though you pull them out, there's enough energy and moisture left for this plant to put all of that into producing it's going to put all its energy the to get seeds. these things to blow. Right. Yep. Yeah, those yeah, seeds to mature. Yeah, it and seed. I'm just, it is yeah, in a very short time, yeah. even even when it's been uprooted. So so napoli won't do that necessarily. No. But here's the, here is where we really want to look at napweed, isn't Right, it? at this stage. So by the time you have a napweed as big as the one we were showing before, it's a big deal to get rid of it. They're, the plants are huge, you have a lot of biomass, you pull them out, you have a huge pile of weeds to get rid of. If you and pull this them is out last this, year's. Yeah, this, this is started, a biennial. So yeah, this this started growing last year. Last year, but it didn't put up the flower stalk. Right. Mm -hmm. So last year it looked like this for most of the year, and it it just um, increased the number of these rosette leaves, and so it would be sitting on the ground looking like this with all these leaves. And all year you could walk past this thing and not ignore it, it and not even worry about it. Then the following year it bolts and it looks like that and that's when everybody panics. Where did this come from? This is all over my property. Well, actually it was on your property last year. You just didn't notice because it was small. And this is probably one that just this started year, yeah. this year. Okay, so this and will... And barely. And yeah. see, look, and the leaves look very different. Right, And, and right. that's, the what, very and that's why ones. it's really important to see that, let's see, the leaves are almost entire. Right. And, and have very few... Okay, a little partitions in them. Where, right. And then here, this one that had started growing um, 
earlier this season yeah. is, is taking off. Right. And then it's an entirely different leaf when it is just crazy making seeds. See, they're just right. individual. The leaves get more and more reduced as you go up on these flowering stems. So it does look almost like three different plants, even though it's the same, it's the same thing. And when they're smaller like this, if you're going to use herbicide, this is the best stage because these are much more vulnerable and susceptible to herbicide. The Once herb it's starting to flower, herbicide yeah, is I'm not going to work on that not at gonna all. Gonna do much. And, oh. and even if it does eventually die, um, it takes time for herbicide to work. And so if you sprayed that plant at this stage with the with the flower buds already there, it might actually continue on and produce. And it would take an inordinate flowers. amount of herbicide. Well, right. Yes, because and, and look at how diffuse it is. <laughs> right, it's diffuse knapweed. And so, and so therefore, diffuse. it's very hard to um to spray right. to cover you know right. enough of the plant. Exactly, and also when you're spraying up like this and around and down versus just spraying over the ground on these lower rosettes. It's a lot easier to get them at this stage. And, and collateral and, damage. Yeah, yeah. right. You're, and you're using just more herbicide than you need. If there's any good news with this, and we look at this ginervous knapweed, um, first of all, to get rid of it, pull it. it it's it's going to be a pulling operation at this point. Right. But they're fairly easy. I've, I've, had, I've pulled a lot of these. They're, they're fairly easy to pull out of the ground at this point. Well, yeah, yeah, if the ground is still wet. wet. They just kind yeah. of pop right out. Yeah, and you know, part. the best, really the best time to pull them is before it gets multiple branches like this, it goes through a stage where it's like a rosette, and then all of a sudden there's one main stem that comes up. That main stem then branches off and becomes this diffuse branched plant. If you can pull it when that first stem comes up, it's like a handle, and you can pull it out. It's actually easier than pulling it at this stage. You, you just twist it counterclockwise. Yeah, you, you, if you pull at this stage, you really have to get down there close to the ground and really yank that out. Um, and it's a good time to get it also if you're spraying as it just begins to bolt. That's all you can still spray at that point. And it's easier to see at that point because they, they really do shoot up a really straight stem that comes up above the ground and you can see where all of them are. And the ones that are doing that, that are bolting, is what we call that when it prepares to form seed, the ones that are bolting are the ones you really want to get rid of because they're the ones that are going to perform the whole flowering and going to seeding business this year and then you get new seeds in your, in your seed bank for the future. And we're going to take a break because we're going to go wash our hands because we have been handling the nap weed. Yeah, that's a good point. When you're going to pull weeds, I would say always wear gloves no matter which weed it is you're pulling because some weeds are actually fairly toxic and uh, you don't really want to get the sap on your hands when you're pulling a lot of them. It's happened to me before. I pulled a weed and I scratched my nose and I got a little bit in my eye. The next thing you know, I'm in the emergency room because my eye is going, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. And so, that was the yeah. only time you ever pulled weeds, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Third time I pulled weeds. Yeah, so we're, wear gloves. <laughs> wear gloves. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're talking weeds on Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees. Don't go anywhere. Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees will be right back after this. Please join us weekly for the 12th District with yours truly, Carrie Condotta. Check your channel guide for times or go to ncwlife.com for details. Welcome back to Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees on the NCW Life Channel. Welcome back to Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees. It is the national bestseller, Noxious Weeds That Harm Washington State. Uh, number three in this week's New York Times bestseller list. You know, you know could I make a little comment Please. on this booklet? You can find this booklet all over in Wenatchee, in, in the, well, in the county. We, we distribute it to different nurseries, hardware stores, things like that, and they're free. You can pick them up. We get them from the state weed board, and the, our sole purpose is to distribute these to as many people as possible. Well, so well, you open, probably open, have seen open it. Open one up, and you can see how, how cool the pictures are. Yes, we yeah. have color pictures showing the plant at different parts of the plant. And she goes right stages. to puncture vine, puncture wouldn't vine. you know? Yes. <laughs> Which is one of everybody's favorites. Yeah. Yes. And, we're, and the thing is that puncture vine, when it is massive, I mean, can cover it can cover several square feet. Oh, yes, easily. But... Yeah. Here and it's coming up right now. Right now, right and, now. And for the speak. rest of the summer, okay. I have two, two oh, youngsters. Yes. These are good examples. This guy has not even started to become prostrate yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's still sitting. It's still sitting up, and there's no, notice no flowers. No flowers mm -hmm. yet. But and this one is and, and I got this uh, off my neighbor's driveway, out of the gravel of my neighbor's driveway, 
and uh, from a you know a truck probably mm -hmm. and um, and this one you can see already at this size has one little seed pod right there it's a seed pod and each seed yep. has about four. maybe well actually the seed breaks into five segments and each segment of this pod can actually have two or three seeds Jeez. within it so you so, can have 70,000 seeds on a plant. And they yes. get on your socks and on your shoes. They yes, get they get everywhere. in your shoes. So while you think this one, you know, has, hasn't has really done any damage yet, it's already forming a seed mm -hmm. pod right there. So it's not too early. It is never too early to get these out and of the And these ground. buggers grow parallel to the ground. That's yes. really their Normally biggest... it would be growing, you know, so if, flat if it, on the ground. You see, this one hasn't, it hasn't become multi-directional, right. um, which is one of the reasons I picked it up. Because, but see, it's starting now. Right. Because they grow in a, a true rosette. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the stems come out in all directions like the spokes on a wheel. And sometimes people will think, well, they'll see a yellow flower at the end. It's like, I got it just as it was starting to flower. But even though it continues to produce flowers on the ends of the stems, all along the stem, back to the point where it originated, it can be having many um, ripe pods that are ready to disperse seeds. So don't wait until it stops flowering to get it, because it just keeps flowering and forming seeds. And honestly, they can grow, I mean, oh, six feet wide. So by the time you've got a six foot wide plant, you do have literally hundreds and hundreds of seeds. And the bigger they are, the harder they are to get rid of. And, and the thing is, you can just roll them up, okay? And there's a group here in town, the Goathead Warriors. You mm -hmm. want to tell us about the Goathead Warriors? Well, um, they are, I don't know, they have a lot of background the on The Goathead them. Warriors. Sounds like a really bad softball well, team. No, it, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. No, but they're, what their mission is to eliminate goat heads, at least on the loop trail, and they're also starting to look at um, trying to go over the alleys and ma main bike routes through through town. So their goal is by um, having volunteers involved and hand pulling these plants. Um, and you can actually just scrape them out with a shovel or something. Mm -hmm. This has a little skinny tap root. And once you scrape that off and break the tap root, even if the root is still underground, it's not the kind of a plant that right, will sprout back from the roots. No, but it so, has neighboring seeds that'll come up and take the place. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. So if there if there was one goat head in the ground and this plant sprouted, there's probably two or three seeds left right there for another one to sprout. But you can um, basically, even with a hoe, just kind of scrape them off and especially when they're small like this, they're pretty easy to remove. Let me ask you this. This is classified as a class B. Right, class B. Talk about the weed. different classes. Okay, of well, we weeds. have three classes of noxious weeds. So we have class A, class B, and class C. So class A are the weeds that are the highest priority in the state because either we don't even have them in the state yet, which makes it sound like a weird thing to have it as a high priority, but it's a lot easier to deal with a weed if you're finding the very first patch. Now, whoever found the first patch of puncture vine in Chelan County, if they could have just eliminated it, we would all be so happy now. <laughs> but to give the high priority to those that are the most rare, in a sense, um, the thinking is that it's a lot easier to get rid of them when you have a very small patch. So if you find a Class A weed, it's the first one in your county. You're just going to put a lot of resources into getting rid of it and actually eradicating it. So class Before A weeds, it can get a toe hold and right, make something happen. Class right. A weeds have to be eradicated, which means all parts of the plant removed and gone. Class B um, depends on which county you're in. Uh, class B weeds are already more widely distributed in the state. Some counties have a lot of them, like we have a lot of diffuse knapweed. Other counties on the west side, say King County, they hardly ever find diffuse knapweed. So the class B weeds are, are less broadly distributed and they're um, maybe a higher priority in some counties because they only have a little bit. Other counties where it's already widespread like diffuse knapweed, it's really a lower priority. And then a class C weed is something that's pretty widespread over the entire state. There's already so much of it that we really don't think we can get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And so rather than put a lot of resources into it, we um, we mainly educate on the class C weeds. We want people to know this is a bad weed, something like bindweed. You or, don't want or, to let it get started or, if you or don't already white have top. It. Right, white top is also a, a, a class C weed. Um, and here's a here's a good example of bindweed, which is very widespread. Um, there just would be no way that you could prevent all of the seed sure. production. And that's how you you uh, decide what goes on the B versus the A or the C is. 
if you can prevent seed production, you have, you have a small enough number of plants that you really could prevent seed production in a year, then it's a much higher priority. Something that's already widespread, the cat's out of the bag, it's just tough. But you do want people to control it if they can, if it's within their means on their own properties. Um, and in the county, we do have a policy of trying to control all of the weeds, class A, B, or C, on right-of-ways um, and travel corridors just to prevent you know, these weeds from spreading around. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm doing? I'm pawing in here because I have a little, a little guy because they look entirely different as oh, when youngsters. they first come up. Yeah, yeah. right. That's, yeah, that's true of many weeds. of our weeds is yeah. that you, you don't notice them or you don't recognize them when they're very small and easy to control. And once you've got this growing up over your tomatoes and up your fence, you definitely know you've got bindweed, and mm -hmm. then it's very hard to control. You know, I saw I saw someone who actually was growing this up their chain link fence to beautify their chain link fence. Oh, well, it is actually kind of a pretty flower. It is a little like morning a little glory. Morning glory. Yeah. I know, yes, and I yes. and I lost the little the little guy who with the I had yeah. immature. And you know, this is not hard to pull. You can pull it up, but it breaks off right here. And this gives you no indication of the amount of roots that's underground. Like six feet. Oh yeah, up, yeah. It, it goes down, it goes wide, and so yeah, you can just easily pull this, and the plant is literally laughing at you because there's so many more reserves, and it just pops up. I have to admit, I have it in my vegetable garden, mm -hmm. and I'm out there hoeing and pulling all the time trying to get rid of it. But that is a class C. So we do have those three different classes. Um, okay, so class B. And class A, and, and, cla and, cla and is a Dalmatian toad flax? It's a class, class a? B. No. Class B, okay. It's a class B. Okay. We don't okay. really have very many class A weeds in mm -hmm. Chelan County. We have common crupina, which is up in the Sawtooth Wilderness on Lake Chelan, and we have um, some wild four o'clocks in Chelan, which that's also a class A, and we recently discovered flowering rush in the Columbia River near Eniat. Well, it's actually on the Arondo side of the river, and that's a class A. So. Class A's are really more rare. We, we don't have very many in Chelan County, but we're Which always on the lookout for yeah. them. We're always looking for them, yeah. I want to go back to uh, Goathead Warriors. Okay, the Goathead Warriors. They yeah, have we a website. started talking about them. They have a website, and um, you can go there, and they you can sign up to be a volunteer and, by going to the website, and they will provide gloves and bag three milli millimeter bags mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, shovels. To help you on your way. Oh, to control yeah. the goat heads. Yeah. Yes, to control yes. the goat heads. So go to that website. I mean, you know, and then goat head warriors. Go ahead, warriors. Called. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, and you bring up an interesting point. Um, we, as we learned earlier in this episode, you always want to wear gloves when you're pulling weeds because you just they're, they're they can be toxic, very very toxic indeed. The actual okay, I pulled a bunch of weeds out of my yard. I, I don't want them anymore. How do I dispose of them? Are I going to do more harm than good if I chuck them in my garbage can and then they're just going to go someplace else, aren't they? Not necessarily. Okay. Depends how you dispose of them. Let's talk so, about that. Okay. So if you, and this again depends on a lot of things, mm -hmm. okay? If I pull up a lot of this puncture vine and it's just green, it doesn't have seeds on it yet, I can make a pile of that, put it in a plastic bag, tie it up, and put it in my trash. No harm done. A lot of people... Are resistant to that because they pull and pull they have giant napweed I had one lady tell me that she had like 42 contractor bags of Russian thistle one year that's a lot of stuff to haul to the dump if you picked it when it was small like this size you wouldn't have that problem maybe one contractor bag but it is a problem to dispose of so um, it is a, a legitimate way to dispose of them into the dump wrapped in plastic um, some people prefer to pile them and they want to burn them or something like that. Um, burning, of course, has its own issues. <laughs> I certainly don't recommend burning unless you've checked all of the burn bans and everything that applies in your area. And not all seeds are killed by burning. So, for example, if you're pulling um, goat heads late in the year and there's a lot of seeds on there already and you pile them up and burn them, you're going to have a lot of goat heads coming up right in your burn pile. Well, roasted, roasted. Yes, because a lot of seeds are resistant to burning. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing, too, is if you're pulling a lot of weeds that are green and they don't have a lot of seed yet, you can pile them, put a tarp over them, and let them decompose in one spot. Then when you pull that tarp off, you want to remember, okay, I had weeds here, I had noxious weeds here. I'm going to give this spot extra attention this year and watch if any of that comes up and control it right away. At least it's all in one spot instead of being blowing all over your, your property. So you can tarp them, let them rot, especially if they haven't gone to seed. 
and then the other option is bagging them and disposing them. We just don't want to see truckloads, you know, piled in the pickup truck and blowing off into the ditch as you go to the dump. Mm -hmm. That's well, really weed not stew. acceptable. I call it weed stew, and what I do is I, I these weeds, like these guys here, I put them into a plastic bag and I put a cup of water in with them and tie it. And, oh, then I put, yeah. and then I put it out in the sunniest, hottest spot on my driveway, mm -hmm. and let it let it um, work. Yeah. And actually, I can actually um, use it in my compost because it mm -hmm. does that does it boils the seeds. Right. It cooks them. Right. It cooks right. them. You know. And so I'm not sure I would do that with puncture vine. You know. Yeah. I, I don't it, think anything kills those seeds. <laughs> I, I think no. You're right. I don't think anything it. does. But again, the sooner you pick your weeds when they're young and green and juicy. You know, this is this is Russian thistle. And you could safely of, put that in the compost; it would decompose, and it doesn't have any seed yet. Now, so. Yeah, and now and now look at look on the picture that's on the screen right now. There is a giant uh, thistle, and that's the when people see these tumble tumbleweeds, weeds, mm -hmm. right. and they all pile right. up against the fence, and they just look terrible. Yeah. Well, who would recognize? This is what it starts. As. You right. wouldn't know. You right. wouldn't know. See, right. and, and here, and here it is again with a, a very attractive purple stem, mm -hmm. and um, and it's kind of, um, and this is a little bit older than that one. Right. But um, boy, there's a lot of them this year. Yeah. 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 It's just been we, a bumper year for that. Especially, I've noticed on the on the east side of the river, they were just everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. Well, we get a lot of calls about this plant because, especially in March, when the wind starts to pick up around here, and that's when it's comes up over people's fences and into their backyard. And it is not on the noxious weed list, so you know it's the a noxious weed. weed board really can't do anything about it as far as enforcement goes. It's a nuisance weed, so it's one that really annoys a lot of people. You probably don't want it in your yard, and you especially don't want to let it roll into your neighbor's yard um, because your but neighbor is, doesn't want that either. But this is the week to get it. But this is when you should be yeah. getting it, when it looks like this. Don't wait until it's the size of a bushel basket. And then you also have that extra problem of disposing it. Yeah, they're very, they're just, they, yeah. they're like, don't touch me, leave yeah, me right. alone. They're, That's right, see, yeah. where this you could put they're into, the into a bag. They're the mean neighborhood dog of weeds. Yes, you know, yes. Right. Exactly. Yeah, right. This yeah. would be right. very easy to dispose of. You could in put bag. hundreds of them into in one bag. garbage bag. Yeah. So. So, Bonnie, we're running out of time. Let's go back okay. real quickly and talk about the Goat Head Warriors. How, how does one get involved? You, you just go to the website, Go Head Warriors. Okay. Okay. And it, all the information is there. Okay. Do okay. you get like a t-shirt or there? No, no, no. I don't think, okay. I think it's personal rewards. You okay. know, you don't, life is really filled it with is. personal rewards. It is. It is. <laughs> and they get together and they go out and they no, talk about the door And no, you can do it on your okay. own too. Or you can do but it, it with the group. But it's a social thing. It, you want to yeah, get together. It, really. it can be both. Yeah. Okay. So, so. so go to the website and there's two people you can talk to, Mike Sorensen and Doug Polly. And um, if you need more information. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to preview what we're going to do next week, because this is where we got to do two episodes at least. We might even do three. Who knows? <laughs> this is a very organic show. It kind of flows. So next week's episode, we're going to preview it and a few other things when we come back. Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees on the NCW Live channel. Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees will be right back after this. Have a fun video you'd like to see featured on NCW Life? Email us at newsphotos at ncwlife.com. Welcome back to Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees on the NCW Life channel. Has anybody ever said you're a nuisance? <laughs> no, but I am noxious. I no, am not I'm obnoxious <laughs> is what I am. <laughs> well, we're looking at all these nuisances here, and we're going to talk some more next week about nuisance weeds and also we're going to look at some really bad guys. Yeah, and st stuff that shouldn't be anywhere near your, your property, anywhere. We're talking hemlock, stuff that can kill you. Right. It's out there. Yeah. It's out there and it's closer than you think. It sounds like a horror movie. <laughs> and, so, and so Julie will be with us again uh -huh. and, and sharing her expertise. Thank you for spending the hour with us. You're welcome. I really appreciate having uh, the chance to help educate people. And if you need help from Julie, believe me, if you're not taking care of your noxious weeds, she'll find you. <laughs> but if you, if you want to be a little proactive, uh, how you can get a hold of Julie to find out maybe if you have some, some noxious or, uh, or nuisance weeds in your property, just look at the bottom of your screen and Julie will be more than happy to take care of you because that's what you do. Right, exactly. And we do walk through your property with you if you really want to know what you have, what's noxious, what's nuisance, what you need to worry about. We'll do a okay. site visit if you like. And that's speaking of site site visits, we'll be out and about next week. We're going to find weeds in their natural habitat, pretty much everywhere. We'll be uh, see you next week on Great Thumbs and Dirty Knees. Until then, bye bye.
Are you wanting high-speed internet but don't have access to PUD fiber? Try SkyFi high-speed wireless internet from Localtel. Call 888-8888 today.